Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Continuing on in our study of the three fundamentals of Surah Thabatha We left off when we're talking about dua and we're talking about ibadah and that Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala used to show that making dua he used as evidence certain verses of the Quran Kitab Allah to illustrate that dua to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or any type of worship to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shirk. Any ibadah to other than Allah is shirk, and we already know that. So he mentioned the ayah on the, on the bottom of the page. It says, uh, he says, so whoever directs a worship, an act of worship to other than a law is a polytheist, an infidel, means they are a kafir, they disbelieve in Allah and His Messenger. This is demonstrated by Allah saying, meaning that this is evidence, the evidence for this is Allah's statement. How do we know someone is a disbeliever if they supplicate to other than Allah? We know because Allah says in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If anyone invokes besides Allah any other God, he has no authority thereof, and his reckoning will be only with his God, and verily the unbelievers will fail to win through. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that the person if anyone invokes besides Allah, any other God, that he has no authority for, no one has authority to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing legitimate that someone can take, so they have no authority to worship other than Allah. And how do we know that this act is uh, disbelief? Because Allah mentioned in the same ayah, He said, and verily the unbelievers will fail to win through. <laughs> Otherwise, what does unbelievers have to do with anything in the ayah? Because it's in the ayah, because it's letting us know that the one who does this becomes an unbeliever. This is the general hukum. There's many details that need to be discussed, and we will discuss them. Also, as evidence, he said, and in the prophetic saying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a dua wa ibadah. The Prophet said, supplication is worship. A dua wa ibadah. Supplication is worship. That lets us know how to feel out that any ta any supplication that, that supplicating that when we make dua it's ibadah. And we should make dua or ibadah to who only? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some beautiful benefits before we get into so I'm gonna read this this is mostly Arabic so we'll translate it so that way we can get maximum benefit. This is from Imam, one of the Imma of Ahl Sunnah in this time, a great Imam, his name was Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Baz, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And here's what he said in explaining this part of the treatise. He said, Al Ibadatu Unwa. Al Ibadatu, because it has Alif Lam, Al Ibadatu, so it can't take ten wing. Al Ibadatu Unwa. فَمِنْهَا الْإِسْلَامِ بِأَرْكَانِهِ فَكُلُّ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ مِنْ أَعْمَالَ الْإِسْلَامِ عِبَادًا مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ وَالصَّوْمِ وَغَيْرِ ذَلِكَ وَحَكِذَ الْإِمَانِ بِأَعْمَالِهِ الْبَاطِنَ كَالْإِمَانِ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُوبِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْإِمَانُ بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ وَكَذَلِكَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْمُحَبَّةِ وَالرَّجَاءِ إِلَى غَيْرِ ذَلِكَ فَكُلُّ مَا يتعلق بالقلوب بِالْقُلُوبِ دَاخِلٌ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ وَهَكَذَا الْإِحْسَانِ أَنْ تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ وَهَذَا أَيْدٍ مِنَ الْعِبَادَةِ مِنْ حَرْفْ جَعْ مِنَ الْعِبَادَةِ بَلْ so Shaykh Abdulaziz bin Baz, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said some beautiful statement here to let us know about Ibadah. Because we're talking about Ibadah. And that Ibadah goes only to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. 
He says, Ibadah is unwan, that there's different types of Ibadah. Ibadah is, it's not just Salat, and it's not just Dua, there's many different types of Ibadah in Islam. He says, Ibadah is different types. He said, from it, meaning from the types of Ibadah, is Islam. Islam in general is Ibadah, because there's many things, uh, you know, he said, from it is Islam and its arkan, meaning its pillars. The pillars of Islam are all ibadah. Making the shahada, on the, that's ibadah on the tongue. Making uh, 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 salat is ibadah, which is the second pillar of Islam. Paying the zakat is ibadah. Som Ramadan, fast Ramadan is ibadah. Making hajj is ibadah. So, he said, from it, meaning from it, ibadah, is Islam and its pillars. He said, everything that Allah has commanded with, from the actions of Islam, is ibadah. Everything that's an action that Islam, that Allah commands, and we talked about this before, anytime Allah commands something in the Quran, that means it's ibadah, that means it's wajib. Unless some other evidence in the Quran comes to show us that it's not wajib, that it is mustahab, or something else, one of the other, uh, the other level uh, types of fiqh, the other levels of fiqh, like uh, wajib, mustahab, makru, mubah, haram. Right. So he said. A'mal al-Islam ibadah min salat, from salat, from prayer, from fasting, and other than that. He said, likewise, iman bi a'mal al-batina, and likewise, iman with the outward, uh, the inward deeds. So there's inward actions of the heart. Inward actions of the heart. And he says, he gives example, what are those inward actions of the heart? Kel iman billah, like iman billah, like believing in Allah. Because we can't see if someone, you can't, if someone has belief in their heart, true iman, the, the asl of iman, which is in the heart, if they have that in their heart, you can't see that. Even if they're praying, you don't know where their heart is. No one knows where their heart, their, who their heart is attached to. Some people, they actually pray to show off in front of the people. Some people, they actually pray, they may pray in the direction of the Qibla, but they actually don't believe in Islam. They only do it because their family makes them, or whatever the case may be. They're hypocrites. Munafiqun. Wa'iyadun billah min dalika. So, this, one of the acts of ibadah of the heart is having this iman or this faith in Allah. Wa malaika, and his angels, and his books, and his messengers, and the day of judgment, and iman in the divine destiny, meaning the qadr of Allah. The good of it and the bad of it. We're not going to go too in depth. We're just giving a general overview because the Shaykh, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab will give us more details as we get in the book. He says, Wa kadhalik al khawf. And he said, likewise, is fear that when you have khawf, there's a type, there's different levels of khawf. There's a khawf that's ibadah. There's a fear that's ibadah. There's a fear, if you saw a lion, would you be scared? Yes. Okay. That would be a natural fear. Or if your mom says, I'm going to bop you upside your head for doing this, you were late. You would be scared, wouldn't you? Because you don't want to get a whooping. That's a type of fear. That's a natural fear. That's okay. That's not ibadah. But the fear that's khof, that's ibadah, is that khof when you're by yourself and you're crying and scared of doing a sin. That's ibadah. Because no one else can see you when you're doing those sins. But Allah can see you. And if you stop that sin because of Allah, then that's khof ibadatin. Because you fear that Allah might punish you. I don't want to watch this. I don't want to listen to that. I don't want to do this. Because I know that Allah is looking at me. That's khof ibadah. And then he said, well, muhabba. And then we talked a little bit about muhabba, the love. This is also ibadah. There's different types of love. There's love for your family. That's okay. That's not ibadah. There's love for maybe your friends and your neighbors or what have you, and other human beings. That is not ibadah. That's not worship. But the ibadah, the muhabba, the love that's worship is when your heart is attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stronger than anything else in the dunya. That is true. That's that love. 
or the love lillah that you muhabbat fillah that you love someone for the sake of Allah only only because they, they're Muslim and they worship Allah and you see that they're a person of Iman. You say, well, why? I love that brother. I love that sister for the sake of Allah because I only see good and I only hear good from them. That's also a bad to Allah. That, that's a, you're doing it and you love for Allah's sake. So anyhow, mahabba has different levels too. So that's what we have to know. All love is not ibadah. Because if all love was ibadah, then that means if you love other than Allah, that would be shirk, which is not true. So we have to understand these things. There's different levels of love, there's different levels of fear. Different types, different types of fear and love. Wa and Raja is hoping. You can hope for many good things. But there's a type of hope that's ibadah. Where the hope is, 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 is the highest level that you give all of your affairs to Allah. That is that hope uh, that you rely totally on Allah. That's a type of ibadah. And other than that, he said, and he said, everything which relates to the heart that's, uh, that's considered ibadah. Then that's a, a, a ibadah of the heart. Okay, that's the type of ibadah. And he said, likewise, ihsan. Ihsan also came in the hadith of Jibreel, which is very important. Where the Prophet ﷺ was asked about ihsan from Jibreel. And the Prophet ﷺ said, al-ihsan he said, letting us know this is the highest level of ibadah. The highest level is, is ihsan. There are three types, there's three levels of ibadah. There's Islam, which is general. All of us are Muslims, so we have Islam. Anyone who's a Muslim, they're entered into Islam. And I would show you on the board, but just imagine a circle, this is Islam. Then you have Iman. Iman is a higher level, the one who is stronger Iman. People have different levels of Iman. Iman is another, the Mu'min. It's very strong. But when Allah mentioned the Muhsineen, in Allah Yuhibbu Muhsineen, Allah loves the Muhsineen. The Muhsin is the one who is on a higher level of worship. The Muhsin, they stay away from the Haram, they do the Halal, and they do the extra Ibadah. They do the extra ibadah. The mu'min stays away from the haram and does the halal. The Muslim, he maybe does some he does the he does the halal, but he does some haram too. So it shows you they have different levels, different levels of iman, different levels with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we're talking about the highest level of Islam and the highest level of ibadah, which is ihsan. What's the highest level of ibadah? The highest level of ibadah is what? The highest level of ibadah is what? Ihsan. Ihsan. Naam. And it comes from the Hadith of Jibreel, also in the Quran, of course, those ayat. In Ta'budullah ka in the It is to worship Allah as if you see Him. Wa in lam tukun tarahu fa innu yirah. And because you cannot see Allah, when you pray, can you see Allah? When you pray, can you see Allah? You can't. That's why the Prophet said in Ta'budullah and the Qatarah. So you worship Allah as if you see him, as if it's your last salat. Uh, if you cannot see him, or because you can't see him, know that he sees you. That's what that means that in that hadith. That knowing Allah sees you. So that is the highest level of Iman. Why? That's the highest level of Ibadah. And that's what Imam bin Baz, he says, Bel huwa a'la anwa'al ibadah wa a'thamaha. He said, rather, it is the highest level of uh, Ibadah, of worship. And the greatest. Why? Why is Ihsan the greatest? Because in that hadith, the Prophet because it means you're worshiping Allah even though you can't see him, you're worshiping as if he sees you. That means you're doing, you're stopping haram because you know that Allah sees you, not because of the people. So if you say, hmm, let me go outside and smoke a cigarette. My parents can't see me. None of, no one can see me. I'm just going to smoke a little bit of cigarette. I'm going to smoke a little bit of weed. I'm going to drink a little bit of alcohol. The one who stops that for the sake of Allah, they say, no. Even if they want to, they say, I kind of like cigarettes. 
Weed has a nice taste. Alcohol kind of makes me feel fun. I have a funny feeling. It makes me laugh a lot. If they stop that for a law, they, they, they don't do it because they know a law sees them. That's the only reason they didn't do it. They didn't even care about the people. They stopped and didn't do it because they know, know a law will punish them. That is sad. That means they're on a high level. The one who prays in the depths of the night, they get up. They get up not to watch a movie, not because a football game's coming on, but they get up and they make wudu and it's cold and it's in the depths of the night. Everybody else is sleeping. But they worship. They get up just because they want to do extra prayer. They want to make Qiyam al They want to make Tahajid. Lillah. They do things, the extra things, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they know that Allah sees them even though they can't see Allah. They're crying. The Prophet used to get up in the, in the depths of the night and he would cry. The Prophet would cry. And his feet would become big. They would swell. And Aisha radiallahu would say, Ya Rasulullah, you know, why are you doing this when all of your sins that you committed before and, and that which you would do in the future are forgiven? The Prophet said, Allah tukun Allah akun abdin shakura or kama qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, shouldn't I be a grateful slave? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was grateful. He did that even though his sins were forgiven. Even though he was the prophet of Allah, the last prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. And may peace and blessing be upon all the prophets alayhi abdul salatu wa sallam. He was the last one. And his sins are forgiven. But he still got up in the late of the night. Still cried. Before his ummah cried for himself, cried for the creation, for their guidance. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is, and no one, you know, he could have just laid in bed and been comfortable. And still all the great works that he did, the highest level of ibadah. You know, we follow his sunnah. But he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did it and showed us ibadah and thankfulness to Allah. Then Imam bin Baz, and I'm going to end this, he said, for wajib ala kullu mukallaf. إخلاص العبادة لله وحده فلا يعلو ما الله الأنبياء ولا أولياء ولا أسنام ولا أشجار ولا أحجار ولا نجوم لأن العبادة حق لله وحده So then he said, and then he brings some of the ayats that we're going to study and we'll mention some of those ayats He said it's an obligation to everyone who is responsible to have sincerity to Allah, to have ikhlas to worship Allah alone and do it for the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. And not to supplicate to anyone else besides Allah. Not the prophets, all the prophets, from Adam and Aesalatu to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Don't worship them. Don't supplicate to them. Don't ask them for anything. Salawatu Rabbi Salaamu Ali, but we follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu We follow the Sunnah. And not the Oliya, and not the saints, not the righteous people. We don't supplicate to them neither. And not the statues and the, uh, 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 like statues, the asnam, I forgot what you call it, the idols, not the idols. And not the trees, and not the rocks, and not the, the, the stars. Because ibadah is the haq, it's the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, when the masajid And the masjids are for Allah, so don't supplicate to any other than Him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says that we and we say this in our in the Surah Al Fatiha, in our prayer, it is you alone we worship, and it is you alone who we seek uh, help. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَلَا تَدْعُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَنْفَعُكَ وَلَا يُضُرُّكَ فَإِنْ فَعَلْتَ فَإِنَّكَ إِذَنْ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we'll end with this ayah, He says, and do not supplicate to other than Allah that which will not benefit you, nor will it harm you. For verily, if you do that, verily, you're the Valimin. You're one of the Valimin. That's shirk. That's kufr. That's disbelief in Allah. Worship Allah alone. This is the shahid. And this is what Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab is laying out for us. He's given us, and he begins to talk about the ibadah, and we'll talk more in depth next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.